Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton, here with Brandon. Uncommons, commons, and PR cards. For Data Bullet, Brandon, what's our first card? First off, we have the Aleph Kurumi. When placed on stage, you can choose two characters and shuffle those back into your deck from waiting room. If you do that, you can decide to attack without decreasing soul. So you can side against uh, opponents 2-2s two or 3s and still stick damage on them. On attack, you can choose one of your characters and give it 1500 power. So you're able to pump power on field to potentially another lane and side attack in this lane, allowing you to kind of answer two lanes at the same time. Yeah, this definitely is anti-standby tech for an eight choice list that is quite small. Next, Derived Answer Kurumi. This is a PR card on play, pay two to bounce an opponent's character back to their hand. On attack, choose one of your other Kurumi or Hibiki characters and that character gets 1,000 power till the end of turn. Are you willing to pay two to basically negate one of your opponent's standby triggers in a lot of matchups? The answer to that's got to be yes. And on top of that, when this attacks, probably into an open lane because you just bounced something, you can choose another character and give it 1,000 power to help that character get over. So, again, more power pump that tries to get around standby. There are enough pieces here that I think that Data Bullet might have some real answers for those kinds of boards. I think this is really interesting, especially in the standby matchup, because one of the characters that has to get power to has to either have Kurumi or Hibiki in name. In the standby game, you could have Kurumi at all levels of the game, right? You could have Kurumi at level 1, 2, and 3. So you have opportunities to be able to power pump with this card and clear a lane that you might not be able to step over. Next up, we have Lonely World Queen. This is a 2-1 assist. It's a level assist to all characters in front of it, so 500 times the level of that character. It also has, when your character triggers the bar climax, you may draw two cards, and if you do, ditch two cards. So it's a really interesting hand filter for bar and an assist at the same time. So if you're running bar, you could be running this to help with hand fixing and getting the cards you need. Cards like this that allow you to immediately ditch that bar along with anything else in your hand that you don't want to go get something else, very useful. In the same way that this card is, Mazenheim Queen, on play, choose an opponent's character, it loses 1,000 power. Also on play, you can pitch one to choose a character in your clock and return it to hand, and then clock the top card of your deck. Again, bar filter. This gets rid of bars, because you're going to have them in hand, because you're going to be triggering bars if you play this, you know, 8-bar green list. This lets you trade that bar for something else. It becomes like kind of a selective salvage kind of thing. So when bar has the support that this card and the 2-1 back row have to offer, it makes bar so much better because it makes it so much more versatile and it really just raises its ceiling. I also really like the ability that it can on play minus 1,000 power from a single character. There are a lot of characters that sit at about 500 power, 1,000 power that have a lot of utility for your opponent. Being able to just remove those cards and not allow your opponent to benefit from them, I think is a very powerful effect. Last up, we have Shadow that should not exist, Kermi. Gains power during your turn. So it has an alarm effect. If this card is at the top of your clock, you can choose one of your characters, and that character then gains that when its opponent becomes reversed, you can send it into their stock, and then put the bottom card of their stock into the waiting room. So you can essentially remove characters from field that you were already going to reverse into stock instead of into waiting room. So that way it kind of bypasses some of their encore effects. They can't immediately bring it back onto stage in that moment. And like we talked about last time, there's a lot of stuff in Data Bullet that lets you really mess with your clock. So you can have this in your clock with some regularity, and given all the other power pump stuff that 8 Choice has, it's possible to challenge a big lane, get rid of a particularly annoying card on your opponent's board, and send it to a zone where they can't get it back. This is so useful in a lot of matchups. It's a little complex. It requires you obviously to run it, but also to get it into your clock and to have all the other pieces on board to get the power necessary to get rid of that piece of your opponents. But it's relatively inexpensive if you can pull it off. This is at the very least an interesting thing to look at when dealing with those annoying pieces that have hand or clock encore. So that's it for that. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back on Tuesday with a clock talk. Next Thursday, five cards, five minutes for Ruby rares and double rares. The following Tuesday, Brandon will have a deck and we'll have gameplay for that deck in two weeks. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one. We'll see you then.